everyone. Welcome to the Black Beauty Cook Along. This is part of our Black Beauty Week celebration. So if you guys have been tuning in, you've been watching us make really amazing food. And I've been blessed to be able to co-host so I can eat all this good food afterwards. Um, today we have a special guest, Chef Kwame. And um, I'll let him tell you a little bit more about himself. But first, I want to tell you guys how we connected. So Chef Kwame is a really dope Ghanaian chef out of Brampton. And many years ago, we had this event called Jollof Wars. And Jollof is this, just this amazing flavorful rice that is super popular across West Africa, and everybody thinks they have the best Jollof rice. So we decided to have a competition, and Chef Kwame came through and he represented for Ghana. And maybe you can tell us what happened when you represented for Ghana. Well, of course, Ghana took you home. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So <laughs> he represented well, and uh, he was able to you know, go home with the prize, and people love that jollof rice. I still, you know, hear about it. Um, and now we have Chef Kwame today. He's going to be representing not just for Ghana, but actually for Brampton, another home. Um, for everybody who's not familiar, Brampton is a city that's just outside of Toronto. It is home to some of the most diverse, delicious food, in my opinion, in the world, like, and especially in Canada. The thing that I really love about Brampton is the authenticity. Like you can really, really get some of those like meals that you've been craving, the types of things that you got to go to somebody's grandma's kitchen to get. So Chef Kwame um, has a catering business out of Brampton, and he's going to be repping for the city this time around. Yes, yeah. uh, I do. Live, I'm, I'm born in Ghana originally, but I've been in Canada for about 35 years, so I'm pretty much Canadian. I love everything about Brampton, where I, I, I currently live. Mm -hmm. um, as I didn't mention, it's a diversity for me, uh, the different tastes, the authenticity. Uh, there's many restaurants, the Caribbean aspects, the Portuguese. I love it. It's a fusion of greatness in Brampton. Um, today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than most of my friends are used to me doing, which is uh, traditionally uh, fusion West African food. Uh, this is more of a light uh, pasta uh, with a pan seared tilapia. Nice. You know, I think this is like good old fashioned comfort food, something a little bit lighter which is really nice because, um, you know, it seems like all week we've been doing seafood. We had pepper shrimp yesterday, oh, nice. so now we're going to get some nice, you know, fish going. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to cook as you, you know, start prepping? Um, cooking, believe it or not, I got inspired through my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom, um, God bless her soul, Margaret, she's the original chef, like, within the whole family. She's amazing. Anything she touches is gold. So believe it or not, the food that I learned from her, it, it's almost like she passed it to me without even, I never really stood in the kitchen with my mom or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I went to culinary school, but the authentic Ghanaian food that I, I cook, a lot of it comes from memory. And, you know, I mean, of course, I, I would call my mom and, you know, get some points here and there. But a lot of it is like, and she was amazed herself at how it's, uh, you know, doing the things that she's been doing all, all her life was like without her teaching me. But um, the inspiration is different from my mom, and uh, that's where that's 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 how I got into cooking. In terms of what I got over here, okay. um, we got some uh, a fillet of tilapia, right? Fresh tilapia, lightly seasoned with some salt and pepper. Okay, we have some parboiled pasta. Okay, we have some diced onions, uh, diced mushrooms. Nice bell peppers, some chili sauce. This stuff is magic. You can get it at any Asian store. It's like a chili garlic paste. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like a good base for quick sauces or anything like that. I love it. Nice. Um, Very nice. This is just soy sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some 10% cream right here. Okay. Some butter. Mm -hmm. We have uh, our, our, our garlic chili pesto without the nut because of nut allergy. Um, we have some spinach and diced scallion right here. Nice. Okay. Lemon. This is an added thing that I love. This is curry. Um, there's two types of curry. Uh, the Indian curry tends to be a bit more on the stronger end, whereas the Jamaican curry is a bit more subdued on the on the flavors. It's not as uh, strong. So I use that a bit, depending on what you're cooking. You know, sometimes you want that strength, right? I use both. But for this particular... Um, recipe that I'm doing. I have this. You don't have to have this. A lot of people don't like curry. It's a, it's a flavor thing for me. And, uh, it's one of the things that I use a lot. So you can see that's more the, 
any attempts because we use curry a lot, believe it or not. I know. And, and our stews. Yeah. Yeah, so. I learned when I got this Ghanaian cookbook, um, uh, it's called Zoe's Ghana Kitchen. Oh, nice. And then I was just like trying to learn how to make um, jollof rice and red red and everything like that. And I knew like that I need the peppers, I need ginger, and I need curry powder. Curry powder. For sure. And probably nutmeg. And, and a lot of stuff. Crayfish. Cray yes. Crayfish, another one. Like, yeah. Nutmeg is another common staple mm -hmm. spice that we use. Nice. So, what's the first step for this? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this pan really hot at, at least 400. Okay. Okay. Or 375, 400, depending on how um, long I go to, right? And we're using an induction here, which heats up very fast. Believe it or Super not, fast. this is my first experience using one of these. Yo. But we're still going to still gonna make sure everything is flawless. Yeah, you're doing good. No, the first time I was using it, the way I burned my food, oh my god, because you can't be caught slipping. Like it gets really, really hot, really, really fast. Oh, so wow. yeah, you you gotta be, you know, have your eye on it. Um, but uh, it's it makes it for like you know easier cooking videos and demonstrations and stuff like that. So I like it. Nice. Seems very convenient. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're gonna sear. So you want the pan to be really hot, okay? because you want to get a nice crisp on the outside. So normally what I would do if I was at home is I would sear the outsides lightly and finish it in an oven, right? Okay, for the purpose of what we're doing, so I have two fillets here. Mm -hmm. Lift them so you can see. This is a bit of a thicker cut, okay? It is one fillet of fish, but there's always a thicker end and a thinner, which feeds too. So we're going to use this thinner. This end can be uh, seared and cooked right here on stove top without needing to go in the oven because it's so thin, right? Well, even if this had to go in the oven, it wouldn't go in more than five minutes tops at 400 preheated oven, right? Because it's a tilapia fish, it's light fish, it cooks pretty fast, and you don't need to be put in the oven for too long, then it hardens up, and then it takes away from the texture of the fish, right? Yeah. So this thing is very hot already. So I'm going to like lower it down, okay. okay, and we're going to start searing our fish. So in here I have parchment paper and oil, so that if you don't have, if you have a nonstick, then you're great, you don't need this, but this is a little restaurant trick we use, so that, uh, you keep it from sticking to your hands. I just learned how to actually know that you do that. Very nice. And okay, it's one something that like in Ghana, what? Yeah, tilapia is a staple fish in Ghana. It's, yeah. it's actually the most commonly eaten fish in Ghana. However, we don't we like bone in fish. You know, they everything is bone in. They got strong teeth in Ghana. Yeah. So um, yeah, tilapia they have it normally in soups. They have it with panku, right? Mm -hmm. Which is another. Um, That's the fermented. Yeah, fermented corn. Yeah. You know, fermented corn flour. And, um, and then it's eaten with fried fish, tilapia, or you can um, grill it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people hate on it, but hey, it's part of the culture. It is. I enjoy it still. And um, why do you handle that? I'll talk a little bit about my experience in Brampton. So it's getting real hot in the kitchen. Um, in Brampton, there were so many great African restaurants, too. West African restaurants. So one of the places that I went to um, was to get Suya at the end of the night. And it's called MJ's Barbecue. And I love it so much, I made sure I brought the spice home with me. But Suya is something that is also pretty common in Ghana, right? Like, yeah, Suya. Yeah, the name itself is a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 it's more common in Nigeria. We use it in Ghana, too. It's actually a tribal thing. The Hausa people, which are both in Ghana and in Nigeria. Oh, it's their traditional thing, but okay. it's loved all throughout West Africa. I use it as one of my favorite barbecue and grilling uh, mm -hmm. spices. And uh, so I'm just going to turn this off for now. Okay. Okay. So good. Yeah. 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 You know, um, when I went there, uh, there were a couple of things that I noticed. When I was in Brampton, you not only got like the dishes that like are classic West African dishes, 
but she had like the West African sodas too, like in the glass oh, nice. bottles. Yeah. So what was the name of the restaurant? MJ's Barbecue. MJ's Barbecue. Yeah. I'm gonna be sure to check it out. Where in Brampton? Um, so that was, I don't remember the address, but it was in Brampton. <laughs> I was thinking, you know. I'm definitely gonna look that up. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards. But it was it was really really good, and actually that was another nice touch. Like one thing that I remember on my trips back to um, East Africa was you always had the soda on the side, and the dishes were pretty you know, pretty spicy, so you want something a bit like more refreshing. And I would always get like a pineapple Fanta or the orange Fanta. That was what I that was like the classic things to go with the stews. And so when I went to the um, Nigerian restaurant. They had that, and I was so ready. I was so excited about it. I know it's just soda, and people are like, you know, it is what it is. But there was something nostalgic about seeing that glass bottle, and like, it made me feel like I had just like taken a trip back to Africa. Um, so it was a pretty nice experience. Ooh, okay, so we got one all crispy and nice, and ready to go. We're gonna do I think the next fillet, and then. I think the other thing that I enjoyed too about this place was uh, the sides. So some of the restaurants that I went to had side dishes that are, high to, are hard to find. So yesterday we made pepper shrimp. That's something that you're going to find commonly in Jamaica, you know, as a street food. But there's another dish that I really love, um, which is, you know, a southern dish, which is fried okra. And I've been looking for that on menus everywhere. I, I know like in Ghana they use a lot I've of I've heard food. a lot about fried okra. It's really good. It's with a little bit of batter on it, yes. right? Yeah, yes. I tried yes. that one. There was a, a barbecue restaurant in Brampton, mm -hmm. a smokehouse. Um, they closed down, unfortunately. But actually, I went to school with the Wait, guy. was it RD's? No. No, another one? Okay. No, this okay. was uh, right by City Hall. Okay. And they used to do fried battered okra. Ooh, okay. And it was like, it's like you hear about it, you're like, why would I want them to try it? Like, wow. Yeah. It's amazing. It's really good. I know you guys are more used to like the stews and like the okra, you know, you see the slime. Like the slime is something that people look forward to. I, I like the sliminess of okra. I love the slime. If, if you're African and you don't like the slime, then you're not African. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But for us, I mean I mean okra is supposed to be slimy, so it yeah. is what it is. It's a super fruit or a vegetable, sorry. Yeah. Uh and it's very healthy. We love it. I love okra. Like if I could eat it every day I would. Same. I really enjoy it, and I, I enjoy all the different versions, but I, fi I find like the, the fried okra with, you know, the crispiness of like some cornmeal batter on top of it is really, really good. So, you know, if you guys are in Brampton, I definitely recommend going to RD's. RD's had Southern um, barbecue, but it also had this Creole touch, so they had things like gumbo and things like hush puppies, and you know, like, Items that you don't really see that much on menus right. here up north, um, you were able to get that there. That was like definitely a pleasant surprise. So right now I'm thinking we're making the sauce. Okay, so here. right now I just put a little bit of butter in the pan, which is the same pan that we seared the fish in. Okay. So normally I would sear the, the fish in the pan without the parchment paper. Mm -hmm. So you get a little bit of the burnt crisp into the pan at the bottom. That's all part of our sauce. It's good. Mm -hmm. But we don't have so much of it here, but it's okay. The flavor is still all there. So I got a little bit of butter here. Okay. I use a little bit of that same oil, and there's a 50 and 50 here, okay? okay. So we're going to start with some onions. Okay. Okay, let's turn this bad boy on. Okay, so, yeah. Let's okay. start this at 300, okay? Because okay. we don't want it to burn, and this thing cooks very fast, okay? True. So we got a little bit of uh, onions in there. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some of our chili. I love these like chef shortcuts because for everybody who likes their stuff saucy like me, you want to have your fridge stocked with all of these like, you know, you know, flavor enhancers. Um, so like there's this chili pepper thing. There's a Ghanaian thing that I really enjoy. I think you know what I'm talking about. Shito? Shito, yeah. Shito so is uh, one of the things that um, my wife's uh, mother, they actually have a business that, oh, okay. uh, yeah, that they use. Okay. It's, um, so I'm actually going to add this because this stove is actually very, very fast. It's super hot, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to quicken up our process. So you're going to see this pasta from start to finish very quickly. But now you're adding... So I added a little bit of the pesto. Okay. okay. But yeah, sorry. To go back to the shit though. So I lowered this to 250 for the purpose of not splashing everywhere. Okay. <laughs> so my my wife, they have a shit brand called Akoto Shito. It's oh. in a Branton uh, supermarket. 
Uh, Bart, which is called Afro Can, is a Ghanaian supermarket in Brampton. Shout out to Afro Can. Nice. And uh, yeah, we have a product called Akoto Shito, which is a gourmet shito. Shito is like a, a, a staple in every Ghanaian home. It's pepper that it, it's, it's not refrigerated, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't spoil. Mm -hmm. It's cooked all the moisture out through, and it's very spicy. It can be eaten with anything from rice to uh, kenke to anything, to food, so whatever. Good. Right, so even, like, you know, like, I know that's not common, but, like, you can mix it up. And it, the thing about the shito is, like, it's made with crayfish, too. So it has this, like, I don't know, it's smoky, but it also has, like, this fishy taste in a good way. Um, and it's more than just heat. You know, like, I love my pepper sauces and my hot sauces to have some more flavor to them and some more depth. And I feel like shito... Calling it a hot sauce, it, it doesn't really encompass what it actually is. Like it's yeah, so much more than it's that. everything. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, how did I go Frank's hot sauce? I put that on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> should tell you, it's called shit tell. But anyway. Yeah. So I got in here a little bit of the soy sauce while you were talking in it. Okay. So I put a little bit of soy sauce, which is about half a teaspoon. Okay. Right? Nice. So this is some lemon. Okay. Awesome. Lemon juice. jerk chicken or we were doing like sometimes in our features we'll do um, lobster we'll do shrimps but we'll pair it with jollof so anything that was traditionally non ghanaian but we'll pair it with the Ghanaian base whether it be the starch we were also doing uh, some non-traditional stuff that Ghanaians might say whoa this is not what we're used to yeah. but we were just thinking outside the box because I mean coming from culinary school it's like it's not about doing exactly what it is that everybody's doing. You have to be creative. Being a chef, it's like being an art, an artist, right? So it's about your vision, what you see, and bringing that to the audience for them to be able to taste it. So it's more, it's very gratifying when someone tastes the food for the first time. Like, oh wow, this is amazing. You know? So as I was saying, so we got our sausage. So I added some of the lemon juice. Okay. Okay. We got our onions, a little saute. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. So this is light, it's nothing serious, it's got that pepper, the combination of that with this, which is the garlic, parsley, and the chili pesto, it's, it's amazing, okay, so we'll bring it up to heat a little bit, and we'll take it off, it's good, as you can see, so we'll put this right here. Oh nice, right over the fish, okay. So we'll glaze that right here. Okay. Now we're going to use the same. I actually thought you were going to put the noodles in there. But you're gonna, okay, so you're going to so now we're going to make the pasta. Okay. Okay. And everything is going to go together, together after. Okay. Nice. So we'll start with this, the same process. Okay. A little, little bit of butter. butter. Let's lower this. And I add just a little bit of the same fish oil that I drained out earlier, not too much, about half a tablespoon, a teaspoon, I should say. Okay. Some onions. These are just some diced red onions. I love red onions. It just packs a bit more of a flavor. Yeah. I feel like that's something you're also going to get a lot in Ghanaian food. Yeah, Ghanaians, we like red onions, onions is our, yeah. our staple. There's a lot of things that we do with uh, red onion, okay? So that's searing. Mm -hmm. okay. I think um, one of my favorite dishes that I remember from your restaurant was, uh, it wasn't actually a traditional Ghanaian dish, it was your, your coconut shrimp. It was so good. I think you had like a mango sauce that was yes. everything. Yes. Back in the day, it was really, really good. Mango sauce. 
And then I do remember the peanut uh, stew as well. That was also really, really good. Peanut soup. Yeah. So the peanut soup is, was a pop, very popular thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of my uh, Caucasian audience, the like the idea of it sounded very weird to them, and they yeah. tried it. I'm like, oh my god, we are in love with that stuff. So here's that same chili paste, the magic sauce. Okay. We're gonna use that because I like everything with a little bit of a kick. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. I need. I always need pepper sauce all the time. Yeah. And for everybody that's like wondering about this peanut soup, this is. I mean. When you're having, um, I think any West African food, there's a lot of brown nut or peanuts used, um, and it's used not just like in a sweet way, like it's used for savory dishes. So for me, like being East African, that was something new to me because anytime I'd had anything with peanuts in it, it was always some sort of dessert, and it was like from a Western context. And then I had West African food and was like, oh wow. This is really good. Right. Like the peanuts are in the spices. They're yeah. in the stews. Like it's like a thickening agent almost too sometimes. Yes, yes. So. It's, um, a lot, you find that uh, a lot of people from Thailand, they, they, oh, they, exactly. they love mm -hmm. our food because they tend to cook with a lot of peanut too. That's a really good sauce. So what I got here, I got some mushrooms, a medley of bell peppers, thinly diced. Okay. We started with the red onions okay we had the chili paste in there we added our our pesto and we're just lightly lightly sauteing it. Sauteing it okay, okay. We don't want it to burn when it comes to your cooking do you find that you do a lot of like prep like this this um garlic uh pesto did you, did you do yes like every week? restaurant life when i was you know these kind of things yeah. is what make the day go by. Yeah, exactly. A lot of this stuff is already done, so it's just you're cooking your fresh uh, protein. Mm -hmm. A lot of your starches are somewhat uh, prepped or partially done. Like your rices are, nobody's cooking rice fresh in any restaurant for you, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the start of the day. At the start of the day, At the start of the day, we are. And but, uh, but we'll part of cooking, whatever, right? I mean, there, you can go to some restaurants that are making like a fresh paella. Uh, which would take like 20 minutes, you know, some of these nice uh, restaurants. So some do it, but you, you, you have to pay for all that, right? Yeah. I do think, though, the interesting thing about a lot of African stews, and this is from, from east to the west, is it tastes oh, better the next day. Like it, Big time. Big time. You know what I mean? Everyone like, knows. <laughs> for real, for real. Especially, like, for me, like, for some of the vegan dishes that I make that are um, Ethiopian, it's a fact. Like, it's better the next day. It has to rent. So, yeah, like the... It's almost like steak. Like when you cook steak, you gotta give it seven minutes mm -hmm. for it to rest, for all the flavor to naturally come back in and the juices. Mm -hmm. African stews, our soups is like that. Yeah. When it's hot, it doesn't taste the same. Let it sit, cool, and then heat it again the next day. It's a whole different ball game. So you know? good. That's why I love leftovers. When I get ready to go to an African restaurant. So what we got here, because uh, health is the name of the game, right? Yeah. And we want more greens. So we got vegetables here, we got mushrooms. I'm gonna add some baby spinach. Why not? I got some scallions in here too. Okay. Nice. Now, you can use any pasta. Okay. We probably have linguine on the on the recipe list, mm -hmm. but this is a different style. Okay. You can use any type of pasta. You can use macaroni. You can use any fettuccine, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. Pasta is pasta. Just a bland base. Right. Would you ever like do a sauce like this and have like a traditional Ghanaian side? You know, like some banku or fufu or like something like this. this. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. If I was gonna make it with like some, yeah, I would have maybe like maybe more saucy. Yeah, maybe like a banku, banku, but it would need more sauce, more okay. of like, a little bit more pepper kick. Yeah. Um, or you could have it with like rice, on a bit of white rice or something. Side oh, of white okay. rice, yeah, a little yeah. bit more sauce. That could okay. be good, yeah. So anyway, this our vegetables are good. What I forgot to mention to you guys is my cream. This is ten percent, okay? Okay. I love a creamy pasta, so I know this is gonna be really good. Um, so, especially like since yesterday, I was getting the pepper pepper shrimp, which is very spicy. So now I have something a little bit more cooler, you know. What I also added while Ed was uh, talking was um, a little bit of salt and pepper, which oh. is obvious. Mm -hmm. so you always add to taste, okay? Because you can't take out, right? Yeah. So, 
pasta is a bit al dente because you finish cooking in here. If you're a cheese person, mm -hmm. uh, at this point you can add some Parmesan, shredded Parmesan to cook in it and finish off as well. Okay. So this right here is also a vegan. If you're a vegan, this is a good, healthy, well, minus, minus, the, the, cream minus the, the cream. <laughs> minus the cream and the fish sauce, but yeah. everything else, all you have to do is take out the butter. Take out the butter and the cream, and then right there you have a vegan. Uh, you yeah. could use uh, almond milk, yeah. a little bit of almond milk. The good thing right now is there's a lot of vegan alternatives that are still creamy and Yeah, rich. vegan dairy. Vegan dairy uh, options, yes. you know. Um, I do a lot of experimenting at home with vegan options, and I, I'm telling you, like, I did something with, like, a vegan butter last fall, and I made um, cinnamon buns and, like, different types of holiday buns, and it still tasted like the non-vegan option, like, it was that good. So another thing you could add to this, especially for vegans, mm -hmm. if you didn't, uh, put the cream and stuff in. You can add some like either shredded walnuts or pecans. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are all good. It gives you a texture crunch with it. And it's also extra added protein for non-meat eaters, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so this, we're gonna turn it off because everything is cooked. Okay. We don't want our vegetables to taste okay. dead. Yeah, <laughs> well, I didn't have a little bit of life to them. So while you're plating, um, can you tell me a couple of your favorite places to eat in Branson? Yes, my, my favorite place to eat in Brampton right now is, uh, believe it or not, is Calypso Hut. It's an oldie but goodie. Calypso Hut, okay. Calypso Hut. Yeah, yeah, it's a Caribbean. Yeah, it's a Guyanese uh, restaurant. They make a Guyanese Chinese style food. Ooh, uh, okay. so it's, yeah, it's very good. They've been around for years. I remember them when I was like a teenager. They used to be on Steels. Okay. Um, the guy that owns it now is really good. Um, the food there is good. It's like a staple for me. It's close to me. I also eat at another place, which is borderline Mississauga, Brampton. It's called Twin Fish. Mm -hmm. uh, they make amazing uh, snapper. Mm -hmm. And then the the Caribbean restaurants, the Jamaican restaurants. You know, your Sunrises, uh, Daddy's Jerk. There's quite a few of them. Yeah. Brampton has got like a ton of different uh, ways to entertain and sort of uh, stimulate your palate. Yeah, there is a lot of spots. I, I, you actually introduced me to some right now because I had never heard of Calypso Hut, and now I really want to go and try it. Um, but I can tell you some of my favorites because I, I have some new favorites. There's a spot called um, Zameka Restaurant. Yes, Zameka, yes. That place is, it's fire. It is so good. And that's just like the tip of the iceberg because I found that the Jamaican food that I had in, um, in Branton, like it just... It felt like, it really did feel like somebody made it at home. In, like like you had been welcomed to like a family reunion or something. Like it didn't feel like, um, you know, it didn't feel Jamaican. You know, I, I, I'm just going to keep it real. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it felt That's a real like, Toronto, yeah, that's a Toronto statement right here. That's a Toronto statement right now. That's a Toronto statement. American yeah. Right. Well, I mean, the Americans still know, like Toronto and, and Branson, the GTA in general has like amazing Caribbean food because there's so many folks who come and immigrate here. Um, but what I found is like, you know, there's there's the fusion, but it still had really authentic dishes. And then what I loved was their appetizers. Like they had these ackee and salt fish bites, which I'm still thinking about with Bami. Um, I loved the porridge at um, Superlicious. I actually made sure I took some home with me and was eating the uh, peanut porridge the next day. And something about it was like, you know, I, I did not grow up on that. I, I had porridge, but we never put peanuts in our porridge, um, you know, just like maybe cinnamon. And that was pretty much it. It was kind of boring at my house. But the, the Jamaican porridge, man, it, it just like reminded me of why I love it so much. It's something that is very underrated. But it's so comforting. And during this season, especially, especially when it's like really, really cold, or you know, if you're not feeling too good and you want some like heartwarming soup and porridges, Super Licious was a good one. Um, another place that I really, really enjoyed was um, Keiji's because they have really good puff puff, which is this, you know, fried piece of dough, and it's it's common in Ghana too, it's called wolf rope there. And it's delicious. Like if you like beignets, if you like donuts, if you just like fried dough, you're gonna like puff up. Um, I think with puff up, there's always a little bit of nutmeg in it, right? Too. Yeah. So puff so, puff. Yeah, it's got nutmeg. Yeah. It's got. Uh, it's like puff puff is the Jamaican way. We call. I mean, sorry, the Nigerian, Nigerian way. Nigerian way. Yeah. And then we call it buffalo, but it's essentially the same fried bread yeah. with 
sugar, nutmeg, and uh, you know. Yeah. Wait, how did you say it? Was I saying it correctly? Buff rolls. Buff rolls? With the oh, oh, yeah. Like it's either either one is right because okay. Ghanaians have an issue with the the L and the R. Mm. So you can say buff rolls or buff rolls. Like got you. It's all the same. We, we, Okay. To be honest, yeah. I'm maybe I'm cheating because I'm not. I myself is because I've heard it so many different you know, ways, both yeah. ways for all my life. That I myself, I have to call my mom and say, "Mom, which is it? Is it buffalo or buffalo?" Yeah. But yeah, which is bad. You know? <laughs> okay. For Mr. Ghana over here. I need to get the authentic one. I don't want the Ghanaians telling me like, "Hey, she doesn't know." But I know the flavor, and the flavor is really, really good. But if you guys are interested in learning more about some of the amazing restaurants. In Branton, stay tuned because we have an awesome video coming out very soon of a whole Black Beauty tour. And then we have some more content coming throughout Black Beauty Week. We've got panels, you've got more cook alongs. But for everybody who's watching and is like, oh, this, yo, I gotta show it to you guys because this looks really, really good here. <laughs> but we've got our pasta right here. Ooh, we got the little garnish. I'm so excited to eat this. Um, but for everybody who wants to get a taste of Chef Kwame's food, how can they reach out to you? How can they get so, this at home? Yeah, so I do a lot of catering. I do private dining as well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to create a special environment and day for your significant other, uh, you can get in touch with me. You can reach me primarily right now on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, so my Instagram handle is chef underscore qual. Uh, that's C-H-E-F underscore K-W-A-M. You can reach me there. Uh, or you can send me an email at uh, Mr. That's M R dot Kwame K W A M E at Frie A F R I Y I E at Gmail dot com or Chef Kwams at Gmail dot com. That's C H E F K W A M Z at Gmail dot com. That's more of an easier one. Chef Kwams, so that's it. Okay, at Gmail dot com. Those are some of the ways you can reach me. Um, like I said, I do weddings, I do private dining, we do catering, uh, so, and I work with, uh, you know, all my clients, we consult, you know, I come to you, consult with you, and we work with you, and what it is you like. I'm very versatile, I don't only do West African food, this is just a quick demonstration of, you know, five minutes. Without the talking, this is really like a 15 to 20 minute tops, because the, the, yeah. the pasta, while well, the pasta is boiling, you have all the ingredients ready when you get home. While the pasta is boiling, you can have this stuff all done. Within 20 minutes, you're having a nice gourmet. You went to a restaurant, they're charging you for $40. And you're eating at home nice and it's healthy. That's right. true. But if you do want to go to a restaurant, there's a lot of good ones. Yes, <laughs> in Brandon. yes, yes. And if yes. you want to support a black chef and some awesome caterers, there's, you know, folks like Chef Kwame who, is it Chef Kwame or Kwame? It's Kwame. 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 Um, Kwame. Kwame. Kwame is just a short form. Kwame. Okay. Everybody's calling Kwame. For the most part, so it was Chef Kwam, but Kwame with an E is the full name. Everybody just call me Kwam. Okay, so right. I'm gonna say Chef Kwam right now. But if you yes, guys want to hit him up, like we're gonna tag him on our Black Booty Instagram page. You'll be able to watch this replay and then stay tuned because we have so much more awesome Brampton food content and really cool panel discussions. So, just in a little bit, we're gonna be doing a panel discussion on veganism, which is gonna be really good. So, hopefully, I'll join you guys there and um before we go any last words for the folks um like i said this was a pleasure thank you. eden thank you I, I appreciate you for your platform and spreading uh black you know chefs giving us the opportunity for people to recognize us we bring flavor you know cooking is not all about fancy plating it starts with the mouth i know technically in school they tell you it starts with the eyes but all the eyes can be as pretty as it looks but when you taste it you'll never go back Sometimes food doesn't look good, you taste it and it's so good, you'll continue going back no matter how bad it looks. So <laughs> my thing is flavor first, flavor first, right? So, yeah, yeah definitely. This looks pretty though. This actually looks beautiful. Well, oh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you got to also yeah. put the art to it. That's, that, that's what we do, right? Yeah. So thank you, Eddie, once again for giving me this opportunity. And that once again, chef underscore Kwam, and uh, get at me for all your catering needs, all right? Yeah, get at him. So this is the end of the day. Okay, I hope I see you guys in the next discussion. It's time for our taste test, but I just want to give you guys a little last look. Um, and I'll see you guys later on Facebook Live. Peace.